Greetings and peace. I hope you and yours are doing well today, wherever you might be watching this from. Now, the uh, presentation I would like to do today is about the life and teachings of the uh, Sufi uh, saint and master, Sheikh Abdul Qadir Al Jalani, and compare his teachings and what he has manifested to what we see in the Masonic movement today in terms of improving yourself uh, to perfection, chipping, chipping away at all your uh, imperfections, and becoming closer to Almighty God, however path that you choose to follow that in. Now, this is the book that I chose to study. It's called The Secrets of Secrets by Sheikh Abdul Al Qadir Al Jalani and in interpreted by Sheikh Tosun Barak Al Jarahi Al Halveti. So this is a, a wonderful, wonderful book and the teachings of Sheikh Abdul Qadir Al Jalani that are still with us today, which were thankfully translated. So his work is still immortal. And I found such fascinating, fascinating information in this book that I have transcribed um, in these notes that I took about like six pages worth of notes that I took. So I will use this as a guiding tool to make sure that I stay coherent and uh, uh, good to go in my presentation. And I will try to describe what I learned in this book the best of my ability so you can take something away from it. I thank you always for supporting my channel and always sticking by me. So I'm, I'm thankful to all of you. So, Sheikh Abdul Qadir Al Jalani, he was the basically the founder of the Qadirai Sufi order, which is a, a good examples of the Qadiris could be himself and Baba Muhayyuddin, who also has a uh, a mosque here in the Philadelphia area where I'm at. So he was basically a descendant of the uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, through his uh, maternal line. Uh, his mother, Umal Khair Fatima al Bint al Sheikh, and he was also a widow's son, just like the Prophet Muhammad. So, see, there you have the Masonic comparison again. And, you know, with the Sufi lodges, like their goal is to seek knowledge as much as possible and to become closer to the Almighty. And those Sufi lodges have existed way before 1717. And, um, uh, even a lot of the founders of the Druze faith, of the Baha'i faith, of all these different schools that are out there, there was all, always a Sufi leader that was involved in some way, including what we see uh, in Freemasonry today about how the Knights Templar, they studied with the Sufis and they studied under the Al-Aqsa Temple, King Solomon's Temple, and took that knowledge back to Europe. So there is that blend between East and West that we can... Um, gather from Sufism and how it has influenced these different schools of thoughts. Now, <clears throat> the reason why I make my videos the way that I do is because the Western Masonic education system is like very watered down. So I took it in my hands as a builder because that's my responsibility to see everything that evolves as a beautiful science and a work in progress. I mean, in today's world, the we always done it this way that mentality doesn't work as you see now even with COVID-19 everyone has impro uh, improvised and switched all of their education online so if you don't take the change nature will force you to make that change and you see that happening now with everything going online even those that didn't want to do it they have to do it to be able to keep up with the times so the Sufi lodges in the, you know, the Arabic numerals, the English language uses the Arabic numerals too. So you see the number seven right there. That's the uh, square on the compass, seven and the eight. So that's what they had always written outside of the Sufi lodges, the number 787. And if you uh, write that out in its Arabic numeral, it's the square and compass. So that means 787 is the alchemy which also is from the Arabic origins, to transform oneself into godhood, which all religious texts have that, where Holy Quran Surah 50 tells you that Almighty God is closer to you than your jugular vein. And even in the book of Luke, in the Holy Bible, the kingdom of heaven is within. So the Creator is with me here. He's right here in my heart. I don't need to 
travel 5,000 miles to Mecca to see the Creator. He's within me, and I'm within Him. But that is a part of my religious obligation to go to the East and <clears throat> go to the city of Mecca, but to put it in a way where a lot of people have that mentality, if I don't go there, I won't be able to seek God, but God is always within you, and you, you have to realize that this world is a dream. It's a dream world, and you're here to do as much as you can with the best of your ability, however you can. There's no pressure of any kind because you'll always be at the right time, at the right place, amongst the right people. Those who leave, they leave because their purpose is required elsewhere. You don't hate them, just wish them well. Because this world is a guest house. Your presence is now required here, theirs is required there. So, and that's exactly what um, Sheikh Abdul Qadir al Jilani teaches in his, in his writings, where he even describes in, Surah, um, in the Holy Quran in Surah Nur, uh, verse 35, that Allah guides to his light whom he wills. So, Whoever is brought from darkness to light, even in the aspect of Freemasonry, it's not for everyone. It's about who is meant to understand that knowledge. And it's not about just increasing numbers and increasing membership. Because then you fall into that corporate mindset where everyone's just there to outdo one another and not actually make a difference in the, uh, you know, the world of the brotherhood. So it's about you being able to feel that within your heart because... You'll have many that have been Masons for years, probably before I was even born, but to them that was always probably a social club because that love in the grand scheme of things of what this thing is really about is only meant to be felt by a few. And that's what Surah Nur is describing, you know, the chapter of light, that the Creator guides to His light whom He wills. So, so the thing is that Abdul Qadir al Jalani. He would put his followers through like simulations like to test their faith. He would uh, test them out, see like, hey, are you really who you say that you are? And that's what he did. Like when his mother sent him away at the age of 18 to go to Baghdad to study, that's what he did. He went over to Baghdad and then he had a manifestation of Al-Khidr, the uh, same uh, uh, individual that was involved with Prophet Musa, peace be upon him, Moses. And he was, he was instructed that you're not supposed to enter this city, not yet. And then he sent him out to the desert to wander. And that's where Abdul Adul, uh, Adar Qadir al Jalani, he fought with his bodily flesh, like hunger, lust, ego. The devil was there tempting him, trying to get the best of him. So he f tried his best, like the aesthetic lifestyles that Sufis are known for to fight his uh, desires and to circumscribe his desires and live within due bounds. And uh, he tried his best to become that master. And that's when he became a master himself. That's when he put his followers through those same trials and tribulations, just like those who are walking the Sufi path or the Masonic path. It's not always going to be a good time. That's why there's the black and white tiles, because You'll go to you'll be in a good phase, then a bad phase, good phase, bad phase. And that's about you knowing, hey, I know who I am, what I stand for, and what my convictions are. And I will always be faithful, not just to those that I promise to be faithful to, but to Almighty God, to do His work and to uplift the fallen state of humanity in my quest to, you know, better the world. So you got to be able to go through the good and bad at all times and not, you know, fall short just because you experienced a bad moment. So you got to be able to keep that in your mind. So <clears throat> the 24 letters, as Abdul Qadir al Jilani describes, in La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, 24 hours in a day, which is equivalent to the 24 inch gauge in uh, Freemasonry, where don't waste your time. You have time. You have this much time for work. You got this much time for your family and friends. This much time to God and uh, you know, the time to devote to your community and what you can do for them. So it's telling you to basically use your time wisely. Do not waste your time because you won't get it back. And <clears throat> Surah Taha from the Holy Quran, verse 55, we created you and will raise you a second time. So that's uh, a Masonic reference. So the uh, three stages or degrees of getting close to God with the teachings of uh, this saint, 
is fighting your ego and coming to light, which is step one. Second, uh, you know, step two is the tarika, to unite with his creator, to become one with that uh, essence of love or that energy of love that exists. Three is marifa, the act of know thyself and know thy Lord. Just like uh, every time that um, uh, Neo went to the Oracle in the Matrix, she would never really guide him. She would just tell him, you already know what you need to do and point to the sign above the door that said, know thyself. And same thing in um, the Holy Quran, Surah uh, Bani Israel, the people of Israel, uh, verse 110. Call upon God by any name. And, you know, what that means is that in Surah Baqarah, in reference to what this uh, surah is referring, in Surah Baqarah, the last two verses, Almighty God says that we do not make any dis distinction between any messengers. And same thing is reinforced here, that call upon God by any name. So you could say Allah, Jesus, Jehovah, Yahweh, Krishna, the Grand Architect, the Great Architect of the Universe, Whatever acronym you want, it's supported here in these verses that it's that light and that love that you're sending by whatever name that you invoke. It's it reaches that source no matter what name that you use it. And that's A road, B road, C road, D road. We're all getting to the same destination. And that's the beauty of uh, the brotherhood is that no matter who you are, where you come from, what color your skin is, you know, we're all the same. We're all here trying to love each other and walk each other home. That's our purpose, and that's what we're here for. And anybody that tries to disunite you, even those that hide behind religious identities and say, yeah, okay, if he doesn't believe what I believe, he's going to hell. you got to be mindful of those people because they'll take you where they're going with them if you stick around that mentality. So <clears throat> according to... Uh, uh, you know, back to the teachings of the saint, is the soul is located by the breast. And, you know, uh, la ilaha illallah, that's seven chakras. So, la ilaha illallah. So, you have your seven chakras, and you have to make sure that everything goes from your root chakra, where the apron, you know, you cover yourself with the apron, and to make sure you're not depleting yourself on a constant basis, like sexually and in other ways, because then that will deplete the energy of your temple and your temple will crumble. So I guess in the West they call it the no fat movement, but there is truth behind that. You gotta you gotta save yourself. Save save your energy and let that energy flow up and down through you like the Kundalini serpent. And learn how to basically absorb that energy with your breath. So always control your breath and your thoughts. Because this breath is what is connects you to the Most High and the parallel universes. Just like uh, when, when Neo becomes the One, what is the first thing he does when he destroys the agent? He, he just closes his eyes and he breathes a few times. So, you know, the, what, what Abdul Qadir al-Jalani is teaching us is that God sent you here to get better. He didn't send you here without any purpose. He didn't send you here to get hungry or get horny or plot against others or defecate or any of that bodily uh, lower nature structure that you're stuck in. So you're here to be better, do better, and to ascend higher and higher until you return back to that source from whence you came. And in Islam, when someone passes away, we say, to God we belong and to Him we shall return. So you have a mineral that goes to a plant plant goes to an animal, animal goes to man, man goes to angel, and then angel goes back to God. So you have to keep working until you get to return to that original source of love and that happiness because that's who we are and that's where we come from. It's not about playing these crayon games that I'm this color or you're this color or he's that color. It's not who we are and we should be better than that and speak out against those who are still in that lower nature aspect. And I believe with the way the world is heading, especially with current events, that hopefully in my lifetime, I will see that um, change come to fruition. And uh, I hope so. I pray to God every day. So knowledge comes in the heart, and 
he can only he or she can only perceive that knowledge if their heart is pure so I can pay for all the degrees that I want I can be I can have like a RW or MW or PM or 33 next to the name but it's not gonna make any difference in my life that's not gonna help me get to the next level if my heart's not reson resonating with Almighty God I don't care for any of that stuff and I never will for me it's about with the purest intention as I say these words is that I want to see a world where and I pray to God every day that please protect me my family and all the people of this world in all ways shape and form that's all I ask I don't want fame I don't want titles I don't want acronyms no fortune it's all I want that's all I ask for and I know if I've asked for it it will be given to me so I hope I hope uh, that does come to fruition so the greatest, uh, this world, this word is often taken out of context, especially by the Western media. So the greatest jihad, and jihad is an internal struggle, where you're trying to circumscribe your desires and live within due bounds, which is a, you know, a Masonic uh, way of life too. So you have to do the jihad with your own self, and the trowel, which is the tool, the Masonic tool, you must use that to dig that dig the roots within yourself you know dig yourself you're the temple dig yourself from head to toe and take out all the bad seeds bad thoughts bad habits um, things that you could do better say better know better and implement those and plant those seeds with the travel and water those every day by being good by not depleting yourself in any way and just being one with that source and being one with that fellow man knowing that if almighty god is that thought form and he's projecting all of us and we're all projections and mirrors of each other then basically even if that person i don't like he's part of that same projection he has that same access to the divinity that i do so you can't hate anybody that's why in all scriptures the almighty addresses itself as we that we are closer to man and we um, created man in our image so we our it's not I or me it's we and our so we're all mirrors of each other and that's what Sheikh Abdul Qadir Al Jalani is reinforcing in his teachings as well so the the Sufis they come from the disi disciples of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and they were uh, called people with the woolen garb with the uh, woolen garb so they, they would be like outside of where he was and he would instruct them in hidden knowledge of Islam that the profane would not be allowed to. Just like how you have in the, uh, you know, in the Masonic realm as well. And it's, that's reinforced in Surah Baqarah, verse 269. He grants knowledge to whom he wishes. The goal is to purify your heart and free it from all material concern. To basically annihilate the self. So the self, it's like, uh, that's why when you ask a lot of Sufis, hey, like, who are you? And hey, what are you about? He'll just say, hey, I'm, I'm nothing. I'm nothing. I came here to do what I needed to do. And I returned back to that source as a non-physical being or depends on what kind of level of ecstasy with the divine that you ye reached where you're either on level one, two, three or you're at that level four level where you're a formless being in that realm of basically heavenly state which does not expire it exists forever so the uh, annihilation of self in Arabic is called the fana or fana so a lot of people say uh, if you go to uh, this popular uh, movie came out in India too it's called fana and um, it shows you how one basically puts himself through the annihilation of self and you must have the mind and heart of a child pure and innocent to be able to move on to that next level to resonate with the divine and if you see the movie uh, The Knowing in Hollywood by Nicolas Cage you see when those um, angels come down when the world is about to be destroyed they only take the um, the kids with them because the kids were the ones that were not had been corrupted so a lot of people say that about me my own family hey yeah you're you might be 28 years old but you know your mind is like a 10 year old kid and I said you know what that might be just the thing that saves me in the end so I'm, I'm thankful for that because everything was given to me because it was meant for me I have no regrets about that I'm thankful and grateful for everything so <clears throat> 
the soul lives forever, what the Sheikh says. So just like how in the Masonic terminology where you're always, you always exist in some way, shape, or form, whether physical, etherical, spiritual, energy, you, you will always continue to exist no matter what. Your energy always gets transformed and it, it builds and builds and builds until it goes back to the source. Now, Sheikh Abdul Qadir Al Jalani says that if you don't have a guide or if you die being somebody that hasn't been initiated in anything, then you die in ignorance. You need some kind of a guide or mentor in this life, whether it's in Sufi lodges or Masonic lodges. You got to get into something in order to help yourself get to that next level. So to be initiated and find a spiritual mentor is very important. The work and seeds you plant on earth will harvest in the next life. So if you don't do nothing here, then you won't get nothing in the next realm. You got to put the work in. You know, you get out what you put in. A lot of Masons like to say that. So that is true. You got to have a mentor. You have to be initiated. And, and I mean, it, you got to find what works for you. I mean, it's not just limited to Freemasonry because it's not for everyone. Sufism is not for everyone. So whether Gnosticism or there's other spiritual orders that are out there, you got to be involved in something. Have some kind of spiritual you know, father or mother or mentor that guides you and helps you get better. That's what it's about, and that's what the Sheikh is saying. And Surah uh, Nur uh, in the Quran, verse 35, that Allah is the light of the heaven and the earth. So, you know, the heavens and the earth, you have to become one with that light. And no, no one gets away with anything. You got to be pure now to receive the reward later. It's like... Um, People who think that they're slick and they try to do others dirty, you're not going to get away with anything. There is a divine force that has witnessed whatever you've done, even if you were in the uh, an underground bu bunker, 100 miles underground, where there's no human, and you did something despicable. You don't get away with anything. The divine has witnessed everything. And that's what they say is that you think you're slick, you throw other people under the bus, and you try to get ahead, you try to run them out of places, but... It comes back, whether in this realm, within this lifetime, or the next phase, you are going to get that back. So be kind and plant those seeds of goodness with the trowel. Don't waste your time and don't be a wicked human being because all that will come. You reap what you sow. So the Sheikh is reinforcing that. And you must be willing to take responsibility in order to receive Allah's mercy. So... You know, in today's society, everybody's extra sensitive about things. Nobody wants to admit that they're wrong. They're, uh, if I say something, hey, you know, I think this should be straightened out. I saw something going on wrong. They'll end up gaslighting me and calling me a liar. Hey, you're making things up. You're a liar. You're this, you're that. But they get defensive and they won't admit their own mistakes. That's why Adam, who was the first prophet and the father of mankind, the reason that uh, the Almighty forgave him, you know, from the Sufi Islamic perspective is because he told um, the Almighty that, hey, you know, I, I admit I messed up and um, I want to make things right. And he was forgiven. Simple as that. So we need an accountability in today's society. There's too many people going around thinking that they're going to get away with everything. No. And you can't just go out here and do whatever you want. There's a law and order by man and of natural law and of the system. I can't just go out here. If I do that, then eventually somebody's going to stop me and be like, hey, you need to take it easy. That's not what you're supposed to do. So <clears throat> the chaos theory doesn't work in that regard. So you got to be good. And your life is already destined. You got to realize that you're always going to be where you're meant to be, people that you're meant to come across, things that you're meant to do. Don't worry about anything. You just continue being the best that you can be and know that the divine will not do you wrong. You just got to be willing to be pure, be kind, and be able to take responsibility and be held accountable when necessary. So the the devil, what the Sheikh uh, describes is the wrath. That's the wrath aspect of the Almighty, where you know you have the yin and the yang, the black and white tiles. So good and bad happens in life, but don't let that shake your faith. You know who you are, what you stand for, and what you need to do. Just keep going. Keep going always. And uh, the prophet, peace be upon him, says, A man of God 
is one who honors his friends and keeps his word. Masonic reference. So one who honors his friends, his brothers, and keeps his word. You have to be a man of your word. Islam means to submit to God. And Muslim means one who submits. And that's not just defined to, okay, I'm classified as a Muslim by this world that we live in. That terminology can apply to anybody. Anybody who submits to God and believes in God and does all that is technically, by definition, a Muslim from the Sufi point of view and the Islamic point of view. Now, Sheikh Abdul Qadir Al Jalani says that in this test that we've been um, put in, in this 3D uh, realm that we've been placed in, in these uh, physical beings that we're in, there are four worlds and four realms of knowledge. So, the first world is the matter, earth, water, air, fire, and ether. So, the elementals and your average world. Second world is the spiritual beings. The jinns, the angels, the seven levels of heaven, the seven levels of hell. The third uh, uh, world is the source of the lost word. Uh, you know, the masons, they always try to find the lost word of the creator. And uh, there's a hidden tablet in the third world where the, that's where the source of all of Allah's messages are. And the fourth realm is the, the realm of Allah's pure essence. Just love and light, formless beings who are part of that flow of energy that's just swirling with the divine creator in that energy. That's the fourth realm. That's what many of the Sufis, are. they try to get to is the fourth realm. Because they, they just want to be in love with the divine so much with their beloved. is That's, that's where they want to get to is that level four. So the four realms of knowledge is the aspect of knowing God and the worldly matters got to take care of my bills, my wife, my kids. Okay, all that is good. You know, the second is mystical knowledge, cause and effect. If I do this, this will happen. If I do this, then this will not happen. Level three, knowledge of the spirit and the divine. And level four, the knowledge of the ultimate truth, which takes you back to that realm where everything is permanent. So the dervish are the one who seek the huck. Uh, they're, they're like the Sufis who uh, do the whirling and they're always entranced. They're the ones that are trying to get to level four, which is very admir admirable. So what the Sheikh also says is that wearing all black actually veils you as you absorb all light. So the color black has often been demonized um, from what I've seen and the reason why in Islam black is preferred and even on the Kaaba is because that veils you from those that try to feed off your light and then you absorb that light so it can make you better. It's like day and night covering for each other. So this is the night that's covering my, my light and my day. So we're, we're a cover for each other. Just like how a man is a cover for a woman and a woman is a cover for man. And your faith is considered incomplete unless you don't make that union with that other half. Because the two halves have to become one. You know how many... um schools of thought and occult teaching say that that the perfect being is a genderless sexless being so in islam you have to the two has to become one with the man and woman uh, becoming in union with each other because that ultimate uh, level of love is what will save you too in the end so <clears throat> the harder your life is the better it is the more trials and tribulations you have the better it is for you so don't complain if you had a chance to wake up then don't complain about anything. You've been given the greatest gift, and that's, that's life. And 787, the alchemy of transformation of man into God, outside of all Sufi lodges. And 787 is the square and compass, Arabic numerals. Always remain pure. So, you know, pus, semen, urine, vomit, all that stuff. Keep yourself in a state of such great cleanliness that you don't even have to worry about those things stop drinking stop um, wasting your uh, seminal fluids and watch how day by day your head and your heart and your mind start to get clearer and clearer and clearer and you just start getting you just start feeling good you just it's hard to describe that feeling you just got to feel it for yourself always repent and you are from you are from that pure source 
and you are not born in sin. So that's, uh, you know, according to what the Sheikh is saying. So <clears throat> the ritual aspect of Sufi teachings, the Sheikh teaches that the rit ritual worship is important because you have to bring peace to your heart and serve others. One, and that's one who becomes worshipful in, you know, Masonic terms as one who is close to God. So if you're not taking the work of the Lodge seriously and, you know, there's a Sufi who's not taking his prayer seriously, then you're not respecting the position that you've been put in. So you got to respect and become a master of the work. Like you have the Hafiz who memorizes the Holy Quran front to back, back to front, so he can better serve himself and his, and his community with all religious matters and other matters. They know that, okay, he took the effort to learn and he can help us. Same with one who memorizes his work and helps his lodge. You will just become a better asset to your lodge and help those that are seeking that light. You will always have that. That's something that no one can take away from you. And the Sheikh is saying is that one who becomes worshipful is the one who is close to God. It's not about, you know, how a lot of people have that mindset that you can't serve two masters at once. No, that divinity, you're a mirror of each other. So you got to be able to <clears throat> look past those things. Because a lot of people put those barriers in their mind because they didn't want them to come close to these schools of thought that would actually free them. So the material ritual worship of the material being and the inner worship of the heart must unite as one in order to be perfect with God. If your heart is lacking, then the ritual will only give you rank but not divinity. So the Sheikh is saying that even those, not just within masonry, but even with the Sufi elements, if you just memorized everything and you don't have the heart to feel for yourself and others, then yeah, you'll get the good ranks and titles in this life, but you won't get that divinity, which is the, uh, the goal of the Mason, the Sufi, or whoever is a part of this spiritual path. You got to be really about it, not just say it. So the tel uh, 12 attributes of the Almighty Creator which are, you know, the 12 names, you know, the name that everyone's seeking of God in Sufi aspects. So, La ilaha illallah, there is no God but Allah. Hu, the transcendent Allah. Haq, the truth. Kahar, the all-compeller. Wahab, the limitless doer of all. Fatah, the opener. Wahid, the one. Hey, the ever-living divine life. Allah, the proper name. Kayum, the self-existing one on whom all existence depends. Ahad, the unique. Samad, the source. So in comparison to uh, Freemasonry, you'll have people that use the acronyms TGA, uh, TOU, or they'll have all these different acronyms and titles to describe the Creator. So it's the same. Uh, it's Everyone has their own interpretation. So <clears throat> the Sufi, like, enagram... They have the Sufi enagram like this, and there's like a triangle holding it all together. So the Sufi enagram is basically wisdom, temperance, courage, and all those are like the different elements around it, all to hold the triangle of justice of the Sufi enagram within it, similar to faith, hope, charity, and strength of the Masonic Brotherhood. The Arabic number 787 also is the alchemy of transferring man into godhood, divine qualities. The numbers, when 787, when written out in Arabic, represent the square and compasses, which were found on many Sufi lodges in Africa and the Near East. The Sufis were the closest to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and were instructed into the wisdom, which was not for the profane. You must seek it. And what Prophet Muhammad said is that, die before you die. And, you know, Masons will know. So you have to, in this life, you got to die before you die. So the three stages of fana. So yes, and even the actually Kaaba itself represents the perfect square ashlar stone, the holy Kaaba in the holy city of Mecca in the east, where you must exemplify in your own being by chipping away at all your imperfections. Everyone at the Kaaba there meets at the level, wearing their white cloth uh, ehram, which if you spell it out, it's hiram. So everyone wears that white cloth ehram. And uh, to become Hiram and exemplify themselves at that perfect ashlar stone. And it's equivalent to the innocence of the lambskin of a master mason. They all meet there on the level, no matter who you are, what your race is, what your job is. Everyone's there to become better and become one with God and meet on the level. 
and to become <clears throat> that perfect ashlar of the Kaaba, everything is relative. 787, seven, square in the compass. So the Sheikh is, Sheikh Abdul Adar Qadr al Jalani is, he's teaching us, you know, beautiful knowledge, even in the importance of charity. Charity is important to spiritually cleanse yourself. You have to give alms at your uh, lodge meetings and at Sufi lodges to not fall into the realm of materialism where you're just hoarding everything for yourself. It is obli obligatory in Islam to give charity and Freemasonry. Help someone without expecting anything in return. Travel light. Always keep a light heart. Don't be like, oh, I gave him something. Oh, he better thank me for the rest of his life. No. If you want to keep that mentality, then don't help anybody at all. If you want to help somebody, then just be like, it's yours. I don't expect anything. Travel light. How we have the, the Western welfare system in America and in the parts of Europe where they use people's money and they circulate it back into social services, which is from the Islamic Umar law of giving back to others and, you know, vice versa. Because you all have to survive together and everyone's walking each other home. And <clears throat> you get out what you put in. So Surah Bakra, um, <clears throat> uh, verse 264, it tells you that you get out what you put in. Fasting, it helps cleanse you from impurities and get God realization. That's why once a year you have to fast to clean out all the impurities, to get closer to God. And also teaches you that those that have nothing, what they have to go through, dealing with hunger and pain and thirst. Pilgrimage, be a traveler. Wisdom, temperance, courage, all to hold the triangle of justice of the Sufi Enneagram. The whales that uh, separate man, of, man from God are black and white, the tiles. Travel to the east and gain divine knowledge. Travel to the holy city of Mecca. It's part of your obligation. <clears throat> the love of, of ecstasy for God's love. So it's telling you, give charity, be a good man, travel, go around, explore the world. That's what makes you better. So Sufism and Freemasonry, it's one and the same. Seclusion, withdraw from the world its calamities to receive enlightenment. Watch what you say, think and do. Pride and arrogance is the downfall. Once your heart is um, dirty, all is irrelevant. So what the Sheikh is teaching you here is that if your heart is dirty and you're not pure, it doesn't matter who you are, what title or acronym you have. You can, I can pray a thousand times a day to God. My prayer will not reach that source because they're going to be like, okay, you're praying and you're acting like all that, but you're not even talking to you know, people that love you. So that, it's, it's reversed. You know, it's a, it's a lot to think about. Or those that do others dirty and say, oh, I'm, I'm a better Christian than you, or I'm a better Muslim than you. Oh, you believe this. Oh, let me get my holy book. Their prayers and their worship is irrelevant. They already casted themselves to that lower realm by falling into that trap of pride. Same how you see in the Masonic groups where you know you have that common sense that, hey, not every jurisdiction is the same, but they're always there fighting with each other and everyone's scared to post something and talk to each other and fully as free men express their ideas. And that's where I come in to break the ice. I talk about things that others won't talk about because I, I, my intention is to reform this brotherhood with love and light where all are accepted and are loved equally. It's not about um, reaching a grand master position or getting a $100,000 pension because I got there. That's not going to save me. What's going to save me is what good did I do for myself and my fellow man while I was here? Was I too busy fighting with my own brothers? Was I too busy pretending that I'm a godly person and while I was doing other people dirty? So that's what the Sheikh is teaching you is you gotta, you gotta seclude yourself. Circumscribe your desires and live within due bounds. Again, everything is reinforced. So dreams. Allah and the devil can both appear in one's dreams to bring revelations. <coughs> Excuse me. The devil can pretend to be he can pretend to be, uh, you know, the creator to tempt them and lead them astray. How you see in the Hollywood and the music industry well, they, where they all praise their God. Well, you know, we know who that God is that gave them the material fame and fortune. But there's always a price to pay. So always do what's right. Don't be a sellout. It's not worth it. At the end, you got to gotta 
you will be held accountable for everything. So do what's right with the short time that you've been given, the Masonic Memento Mori. So you don't have that much time. Use it wisely. Be kind. Don't be a sellout. Be, be kind to everyone. So Surah Kaf, verse 17. Spiritual teachers that would come after the prophet to guide their people. They possess the inner knowledge of the last prophet. The light and avatar presence is permanent. The, uh, you know, the revelations are also given in dreams. So Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is considered the last prophet. But the spiritual masters that came after him, they're basically saints. You know, they're not qualified as to be in that prophethood. So they, the Holy Quran does say that there will be teachers that come after, but they will just be that uh, physical uh, avatar and that light of the last prophet that was actually here. So there will always be an avatar pre present here that would be continuously cast that light upon humanity, especially in times like these. So it, is, it does make sense about the 313 apostles that are always walking around earth. So there could be... Uh, some truth to that. So, <clears throat> the last quote that Sheikh Abdullah Qadir al Jalani said in his uh, in his book is that, "Beware, O traveler, on the path to the truth, that the blind do not lead the blind. Your sight should be so keen that you are able to distinguish the smallest particles of good from the smallest particle of evil. The traveler must have understanding, intelligence, and insight." and Allah is the only reality. So he's telling you that the Almighty Creator is the only reality. Everything else is an illusion. Because everything comes from that source down and everything goes back. That is the ultimate truth. And he's telling you that don't be blind where you see injustice taking place and you look the other way. Think, it, oh, it's not my problem. Ignore the problem. No, you're going to get held accountable for that. And we have that, unfortunately, in the, in the system in today's world, including, uh, you know, the Grand Lodge systems, where they, they see something wrong happening. Oh, look the other way. He'll go away eventually. Nope. You're going to have to answer his creator, which is also your creator, when the time comes. Don't fall into that corporate trap. You know, a lot of these, um, and I speak for myself. I don't represent any Grand Lodge statements or opinions. I say that. Don't fall into that trap. Give that independence back to the people where they're always scared of each other and worried, oh, I post this on this group, I post this on that group, and, well, they're going to kick me out, they're going to do this to me. Be fearless. The Almighty is the only reality. Everything else is an illusion. You're here to be better and to not receive anyone's acknowledgement. And it's like, if this person doesn't validate me, that doesn't mean I'm going to have a heart attack and die. I still have a purpose. I woke up today. If you have a purpose, then that means you're still needed for something. Give yourself some credit and have faith in yourself. And that's why I'm here to reform this system. And I will, God willing, within my lifetime, I ask God to give me the strength every day to make sure that everyone is treated equally and everyone has a fair, fair chance at life. And everybody has the chance to represent their faith. Right, a lot of them tried to shoot me down in these in these groups, saying that, "Oh, stop posting this religious stuff. We don't talk about religion." But then they'll post everything. Then the next post will uh, be describing something esoteric, and uh, <laughs> then they will have like a Bible verse like on each thing, but they won't say nothing to them. So that's that's the mentality that I'm trying to change in the Western Masonic education system: is that everyone is correct. Like Surah Baqarah says in the Holy Quran, that we make no distinction between any messengers. Jesus is correct. Moses is correct. Prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon them all. Krishna, Buddha. You follow what path works for you. You don't condemn me. I don't condemn you. Everybody has the right to freely express themselves and to be of a pure and clean heart. And that's how we will win. That's how we will get, get each other back home. Because once you fall into that trap of condemnation and pride, then it's like what the sheikh said it's you can do all the you can be a good ritualist you can be a good sufi good mason but when that ego is felt by the heart and that pride and you thinking oh this person's this that oh i'm better than him then you failed you failed the test so think about all these things that what i'm saying and plus what i reinforced from 
the teachings of Sheikh Abdul Qadir Al Jalani, The Secret of Secrets. And I also want to send my love to all of you and your families, and I acknowledge that every day, I don't just pray for myself, I pray for all of you and your families, and I, I really mean that. And I dedicate this video to all of my Sufi friends, Masonic friends, and uh, my Sheikh, Sheikh Sufi Ba. So, love and light to all, and may I wake up in a world one day where there's only love and light and nothing else, and I hope that does happen within my lifetime. So thank you.